Welcome. In this video we take a closer look at Spring Boot and Cross-Site Request Forgery or CSRF. We start with a new project in Eclipse. More information about CSRF or Cross-Site Request Forgery can be found on the Mozilla website and the Spring I.O. website. Both links can be found in the description of this video. We start in Eclipse with the POM XML file. Spring Boot Starter version 3.0.5 And the dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Web Spring Boot Starter Security and Spring Boot Starter Time Leaf. In the application properties, we have only server port 8080. The security config class has an in-memory user details manager. And the security filter chain bean. The important configuration here is CSRF with defaults. The home controller class has three methods. Home. Form 1. And Form 2. The last file is index.html. In the index.html file we have two forms. In the first form we use timeleaf action, this way the hidden input field is automatically generated by timeleaf. In the second form we configure the hidden input field manually. We can now start the project and test it in a browser. In the browser we get the expected result. The development tools show the HTML code. You can see that both forms have a hidden input field with the same CSRF token. If we use button 1 we get submit form 1. And if we use button 2 we get submit form 2. We can now go back to Eclipse to use CSRF with JavaScript. We're back in Eclipse to configure CSRF with JavaScript. We have a new controller. CSRF controller with one method, this method returns the text JavaScript 01. In the index.html file we have a JavaScript function to load the text from the controller. First we have metadata, CSRF token, and CSRF header name. In the JavaScript function we load the header name and the token. Create a new header. Do a fetch to the JavaScript 01 endpoint with the method post and the headers. We convert the response to text. And make the data available in the browser. We can now restart the project and look at the result. In the browser window we see the expected result. Below the two buttons we now see the text JavaScript 01 of the new REST controller. Also, both buttons are still working fine. That's it for this video. Thanks for following and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video.